Hello everyone, let's make some FM synths in Vital today. As you guys probably know, I'm working on a Vital preset pack and here we have one of the patches for that. It sounds somewhat like this. This is just kind of like an FM impact synth where you can change the length. You can change the brightness here. You can wash it out a little bit if you want. And then mainly the main thing that you'll often find on these one shots is that you have a little bit of ambience, a little bit of delay and reverb, which is also in this patch. And as you can hear with the delay and reverb, it sounds a lot nicer. But what I want to show you today is actually the technique that I'm using to create this kind of timbre. And then we'll also make another patch from scratch for the vital pack so that I can explain it in a little bit more detail. So this whole patch is based around not really like actual FM. As you can see, there's no FM setup over here. And even the waveform that we're using is not really an FM type waveform. What I mean by that is if I go into this oscillator over here and I go, for example, to the Sidrans Essentials Volume 3 here by Dash Glitch. You can see we have these FM tables over here, which really is just a wavetable that is made with FM. It has this nice kind of character to it. It has these nice kind of textures to it. There's many more of the over here, as you can see. And you can kind of see that in this particular case, we have a sine wave, which is changing its speed. Or in this case over here, we have this kind of saw wave, which is changing its speed. Right here, it goes a little bit slower, then it goes a little bit faster. Those are the main characteristics that you'll often find with FM sounds. I've just quickly opened up Faceplant over here so that I can show it a little bit better. Say that we take a sine wave and we FM this saw wave over here with that. What we do is we set it up like that. And you can see that we get these kind of copies of the waveform that is speeding up, speeding up, getting faster and faster. And you can imagine that this is controlling the speed of this waveform over here. Now it is not really like that because often FM is actually implemented through the face. As you can see, I've assigned this to the face and that is usually where you get the nicer timbres. In this particular case, it means that the waveform isn't exactly going to look the way that you expect. In the sense that if we think about what FM really is, where the speed of the waveform just changes depending on the other waveform that you're modulating it with, you would expect for these higher points that the waveform would be faster and for these lower points that the waveform would be slower. But we don't really see that. We see the slow points kind of at the top and the bottom of this waveform over here, where the faster parts are lined up with the parts where the amplitude changes the most. So in essence, the way that you can think about this type of FM with the face is that the rate of change of the modulator is equal to the speed at which this waveform speeds up. And obviously that is dependent on the amount of FM that you're using. And this is how it will be implemented in most other synths that you're dealing with. Although inside of Faceplant, we do also have the possibility of implementing classical FM, which you'll see over here. As you can see for all of the points where it's very close to silence, you can see that it is very slow. And then over here where it goes positive, it is speeding up in one way. And where it goes negative, it is speeding up in a different way. So this is kind of the behavior that we would expect from FM. Now all of this is just interesting information. And that is the main reason why I wanted to tell you. We can now exit out of Facepan and forget all of this. And just go into Vital and actually look what we're doing over here. Because as I said, we're not really using the classical FM that you're all familiar with. Instead, what we're using is this LFO over here. As you can see, this is set to key tracking. Meaning that this LFO is playing really, really fast. It is in fact playing at the speed of this white noise over here. So anytime this cycle plays once, this LFO will also play once. What you can do is also change the octave over here or change even the tuning over here. But in this case, because both of them are set to zero, we have the exact same pitch for this LFO as we have for this oscillator over here. And you can imagine that we can modulate different parameters with that. A very classical way to do it is to modulate the pitch with that. As you can see, we're not using it here. There's no modulation on the pitch over here. In this case, we're using a technique called Filter FM, which I've explained on my channel before, where the idea is that we modulate this filter with an audio rate signal, meaning that we're just kind of FMing the filter as opposed to FMing the oscillator on its own. Now, the reason why I like to sometimes do it like this is because you have a little bit more control over the exact kind of timbre of the sound because you can edit the, this graph however you want. You can make changes to it and you can hear how different waveforms kind of affect the way that you're modulating different parameters. In my opinion, it is a little bit more versatile doing it like this. Often normal FM, just using the FM over here is also nice and you can even combine the two. But overall, this technique is a great way to get a very versatile FM setup. So let's start with an initialized vital over here. And I want to show you how you can exactly set this up. What you want to do is you just want to set this one to key track here, and then we set it up an octave to zero. And now we have an LFO that we can essentially use to modulate different parameters to hear what it sounds like. For example, let's start by setting up a classical FM setup where we use a modulator signal at audio rate to modulate the frequency of another oscillator. 
So in this case, we just set it to the pitch and we're modulating that again at the same rate as this oscillator is playing itself. And as you can hear, you can change the waveform to get different timbres out of it. And as you can also hear for different waveforms, what will happen is they will kind of align. Sometimes when you hear a little bit of drifting, which can be nice, but other times you don't actually want that. What we can also do is the same setup as we saw before, where we just use a bandpass, for example, to have the signal go through something. In this case, I'll use an analog 24 dB. And then we'll just set this over here, set maybe an amount like this. Let me just turn this off so that we have a normal saw wave going through that. Okay, for some reason in this particular patch, what I cannot get to happen is this filter to be like actually FM'd. As you can see, it's just staying static over here, like it's not moving up and down like I would expect. Maybe I have to use a little bit of a different waveform because of the properties of the saw wave. So let's try that. Let's go into the factory over here and then use the pink noise, which is the one that I also used before. Now we get more of an FM tone. I think what was happening if you look at the saw wave over here, is that there's just one click that is mainly the high frequencies. So it's just exactly one point where the high frequencies are going to go. And there's that means that there's just like one point in the modulation where the actual high frequencies are going through the bandpass. So it's not like the filter isn't working. What is happening is that because it always lines up, because we have these two oscillators tuned to the same frequency, the bandpass is always in the same position when this click plays over here. In fact, if we experiment a little bit more and we send oscillator 2 through this, set the phase all the way down. You can hear that it always re-triggers, but we can set the position of where that bandpass is going to be by setting up the phase. So you would need something that has a little bit more character and has high frequencies for how the whole waveform to actually hear the FM effect. And if you bypass this, you can hear we just get a normal setup like this. Where it's just a bandpass on some kind of gritty tone here. As you can hear, I can get a whole bunch of different tonalities out of this and I can just tweak it however I want. So let's use this idea to quickly make a patch here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put on a multiband compressor so we get a bit more volume. And what I want is maybe a little bit of randomization. What we can do is change the phase position over here. It would also maybe be nice to find a different waveform. Let's go into one of these over here and see if there's some cool stuff here. See if we can find some nice interactions here. I like that one. What I want to try is maybe have a little bit less movement on the FM here. Maybe we can find a position that is nice in here with the face, which is really important in this kind of stuff. Something like that maybe. Now let's distort this a little bit. We'll add our delay and reverb for now, which I'm going to assign to a macro because this is going to be part of the preset pack, of course. We'll set this to one over eight ping pong, dotted on both of them. I'll also set up my reverb to the macro here. And now we can assign a few other macros to change the tonality and add some effects to our sound. So to change the tonality, what we can do is maybe modulate this backwards a little bit. I don't know how far it will go, but it seems like minus 12 really encompasses this part here. Maybe a little bit of a different change in tone can come for changing the face as we saw before.
maybe half that. Something like that. Maybe you want something a little bit more drastic where we can use maybe the band over here. Which, by the way, the band is also implementing some kind of FM algorithm. At least it is emulating a type of FM. As you can see, it is moving the waveform around and it's kind of squeezing the waveform in different parts and stretching it out in other parts. Which is also obviously something that FM does, as we saw before. I like that interaction that we get there. There's a nice range of tones in there that the user can choose from if they get this preset. The next thing is maybe adding a little bit of movement. So I'm going to use this filter over here. Let's put this right before the multiband over here. And let's just set up a NFO for this one. Or maybe let's use the random. I don't know which one will be better. Maybe this one over here. Maybe we want a band pass instead. That is sounding nice. What I want to do is I want to have the resonance increase a little bit over time as well as the mix turn up all the way. This way we have a parameter for the movement. And then finally, you want to add an extra effect, which in this case can be something like a phaser, which is very common. So I'm just going to set up the phaser in a way that it also interestingly opens up if you increase the macro by increasing the feedback, the mix, and also the amount of notches that we get all at the same time. Maybe even the depth would be nice. Having multiple parameters kind of open up like this makes the phaser effect a little bit more expressive. As you can imagine, it just comes in in a more interesting way as opposed to just opening up the mix of this phaser over here. So this is going to be phase. And finally, we need to set up the module over here, which I like to use for kind of like a main modulation that people would use. In this case, we don't really have anything that could maybe be taken over by a modulation. So what I would like to do is maybe make that. Maybe let's add another kind of peak area here. What we can do is use the actual peak that should be in here somewhere. Maybe just like this. Yeah, that seems to get us a nice peak there. And what we then do is we set up our main modulation. So this would be like maybe eight bars long and it would go up and down. Of course, we want to set this to sync. And then we want the user to be able to overtake that modulation. So what I'm going to do is set up the mod wheel over here and then assign it to this as well. I want to set the same values. So I just copy from here and then again, go to here, paste that in there. And then in the matrix, what we have to do is we have to tell this modulation over here that is set to the amount to only be applied at the very lowest point of the mod wheel. So if the mod wheel is all the way down, this modulation is going to play. And otherwise the module itself is just going to apply its modulation, which is just linear. Meaning that for the lowest value of the module, this modulation is applied to the signal over here. And if we start dragging the module around, you can see that our module actually takes over that modulation. Which, as you can imagine, is really useful stuff because the user doesn't have to go into the patch if they want to alter that main modulation. Finally, to make sure that this preset is easy to use, I'm going to set up velocity tracking, I'm going to set up the pitch band, and I'm going to set up the amount of voices that it needs. Maybe you want a little bit of glide, let's check for that. That could be cool. Maybe playing two different notes would be interesting with this kind of patch here. Maybe a little bit more though. And with that all said and done, what we need to do is just save this patch over here. I'm going to call this filtered FM because we're using a filter FM setup. And I'll describe what the module does. It's the peak filter here. And now we have our final patch. 
So that's going to be it for today. This was just a little bit of a quicker video. I hope that you still enjoyed it and that you find the patch useful. The next video will probably be the announcement of my vital pack because I'm very, very close to finishing it. I need another like 10 patches maybe and then it's done. Actually, at the time that you're seeing this, the pack may already be uploaded because I'm going to upload it earlier than the video comes out. That is because I'm currently running a sale on my Gumroad where you get 30% off if you use promo code SPRINGSALE24. It needs to be all lower caps and all attached for it to work. So make sure that you check it out if you're interested in some of my products. But that's going to be the video for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to support the channel even further, another way to do that is by continue watching some of my videos. So there will be two up on the screen right now. So you can just pick one and enjoy. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.